Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the notion of a Fourier series. So Fourier series. And in order to do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the motivation behind this development. So this is one of the most important concepts in modern mathematics. And it tells you that if you have a periodic function, so something like this. So periodic function is one that has a period t. And it also satisfies the condition f of x plus t equals to f of x because essentially it is a function that is defined within this region t, within this period, and then it just keeps repeating over and over again. So it's just cycles of the same function. So Fourier came up with an interesting idea, which was how can we possibly represent this function as a sum of other simpler functions? And he came up with the idea that you can actually represent it as a sum of trigonometric functions. So essentially what you have is a sum of cosine cosine terms. So these terms keep changing according to k, and this goes to infinity, plus sine kx. So the original idea is that you could represent these functions in Fourier series. And basically, as you increase, as you approach infinity in this sum of terms, you're going to exactly replicate the exact same function using just this combination. And you can apply this to any function. It doesn't have to be a smooth function. It can be a piecewise function. It can be a linear function or even a um, piecewise function that is uh, rectangular like that. It, it can apply to any function so long as it is well defined within that interval. Uh, and the period is defined by the size of that interval. So as you increase the number of terms in the sum, you're basically going to increase the accuracy with which the Fourier series is going to approximate that function. So this is just a really bad sketch, but you get the idea that as you increase the, the, sum, the number of terms in your sum, you're going to approximate the original function, and then if you go to infinity, you get the original function replicated exactly. And this idea turned out to be quite useful for solving certain partial differential equations and boundary value problems. So that's the main reason why we study this, is just to apply it to different things. So in general, the Fourier series is defined as follows. So we can represent a function f of x as a sum. So it's going to have one term that is called a naught plus an infinite sum of trigonometric functions. So this is going to be from n equals to 1 to infinity of a n cosine n x plus b n sine of n x. And each of these values, each of these coefficients need to be determined by using a different value of an integral. So these are called Fourier coefficients. The first one here represents the average value or the mean value of the function within the interval in question. So you can imagine that if you have a function like this and your interval goes from minus pi to pi and then you just have a uh, periodic function that continues like that then the average value of these functions, you, if you have the same value k and minus k here, is going to be zero. So this is what it represents. Same as if you have some function that is shifted up or down, such as a, a sine or cosine function, then the mean value is going to be uh, precisely that, that value of that shift by how much you're shifting it in the y direction. So this is what this value represents. The rest of it is just how well you're going to approximate the shape of that curve based on this sum. So each of these coefficients is going to have a different definition. So the first one is defined as the mean value, which is the same as uh, 1 over 2 pi. So, so for the first case, we're going to consider a, a period of 2 pi, and the interval is going to be from minus pi pi so it's going to be confined within that region so in that case the Fourier coefficients are going to be given by the following functions so we're going to have the function itself dx then a n is going to be 1 over pi minus pi pi f of x times cosine of n x And remember that n is just an integer multiple here, so it's just going to go from 1 to and to the fourth to infinity. 
and the coefficients bn are going to be represented by the following integral so it's going to be 1 over pi but it's going to be the following f of x sine of nx dx so this is uh, the definition for for the case in which we have a period of 2 pi and the interval is from minus pi to pi but we can generalize this to any period so a more general period would be the following 2l so basically if we have a function that has some weird shape but it has a period of 2l where l is just the length then we can define an interval minus l and l such that the Fourier coefficients become the following so a naught is going to be 1 over 2L so that's going to be 1 over 2L of the integral from minus L to L of f of x dx then a n is going to be equal to 1 over L so you notice that we're just replacing the pi here by L really that's all we're doing that's why this uh, is so, such an important definition because it doesn't matter what the what the period is we can always adjust it so that we can find a Fourier series expansion for it so minus L rel f of x cosine nx dx and so on you can imagine that bn is going to be the same but you just replace the pi's by l's and that's going to give you the expression so by finding the coefficients and by finding an expression that is explicitly a a term or a sequence of, of coefficients we can adjust our Fourier series expansion and that is going to give us a, an approximation to that function that as it goes to infinity we get exactly the same function and for now it might seem a little bit pointless to do this kind of thing but you will see why this is so important when we actually start solving partial differential equations using Fourier series you will see some of the really nice applications and one last thing that I wanted to mention, which is um, a few really important properties of Fourier series, is the following. So we can have f of x, as we remember, it can either either be an even function, at o an odd function, or neither. So there are simplifications of a Fourier series depending on the type of function that we have. depending on the type of function that we have. So the first case is going to be for f of x minus x is equal to f of x. So if this is the case, this means that this function is even. And an even function might be something like cosine of x, because we know that it is symmetrical about the y-axis. So anything that is symmetrical about the y-axis is considered an even function. So in this case, what we have is the following simplification bn is going to be zero because remember bn has this multiplication here so sine of nx this is an odd function and this is an even function so what happens when you multiply an even function by an odd function you're actually going to get an odd function and what happens to an odd function when you integrate it from the same limit so if, if the function is odd like for example sine of x and you basically integrate between the same limits uh, that are further, um, that the, are the same distance from the origin to each other, well, the areas cancel out. So that means that the integral is going to be zero. So by definition, our Fourier coefficient for this case is going to be bn equals to zero, which means that we're going to have the following simplification. Our Fourier series expansion of the function f of x is going to be equal to a naught plus infinity to n equals to 1 of a n cosine n pi x over L and this is one thing that I forgot to mention in the in the expansion that we did before is that when you adjust it to this essentially you, you're dividing that original 2 pi period by n by L over pi which means that uh, instead of having n x here you're now going to have n pi x over l so that's the adjustment that we do for a general period l or should i say general period 2l that's the um, modification that we do the same we do with sine of nx it becomes sine n pi x over l 
So this is going to be the Fourier series for an even function. If f is odd, then it would satisfy the following, the following condition, so that's an odd function, then both a0 and an will be zero. So that's another really interesting thing. And that means that f of x is going to be reduced to the sum of b coefficients times sine. And remember, it's going to be n pi x over l. So that's going to be our Fourier series expansion. And the reason we need to know this is because computing these integrals is going to be fairly uh, tedious task. So any simplification that we can make will make our lives a lot easier. So in general, for a function of period 2L defined on the interval minus L, L, we're going to have the Fourier series expansion a0 plus infinite sum from n equals to 1 of a n cosine n pi x over l plus b n sine of n pi x over l. And you can see that if we substitute here for pi, which was the original um, period that we started with, this would cancel out and it, this would reduce to cosine nx, sine nx, as we had originally. So this is the more general case. And in the next video, we will solve a few examples on Fourier series just to illustrate how this works.